I'm here with Rebecca Henderson, who is the co-director of the Environment and Business Institute at Harvard. Uh, Rebecca, could you tell us a little bit about um, the pressures on organizations as they look at sustainability and innovation? Um, what are some of the biggest concerns on the mind of business leaders today? Sure. I think the number one concern for business leaders thinking about sustainability is, whoa, that sounds as if it's expensive. <laughs> and doesn't really help very much. Okay. You know, that sounds like a lot of do-gooders lecturing me and they don't understand the kind of pressures I'm under. Mm. And so the second concern is how do you respond to those pressures and use it as a tool for innovation and as a tool for renewal and as a tool for growth. And that's not easy in every situation. I want to be realistic, but I think more and more business leaders are seeing that the opportunity to respond to some of these sustainability concerns can also be an opportunity to save money, uh, improve the reputation of the company, or uh, grow entirely new businesses. So it's an exciting time, if not an easy time. Um, it's also, a, uh, uh, to build on your comments, uh, it's also a time of crisis. Uh, and, and I think you, you do see a, a significant crisis out there. Could you describe that crisis and, and put it in, in the innovation terms, perhaps? Sure, sure. So I think we do face a crisis. It's, it's kind of an unusual crisis because it's a slow motion crisis. Mm. It's, uh, we can see a number of indicators sort of moving gradually in the wrong direction. So most obviously we're using more and more natural resources. We're using a startling fraction of the world's available fresh water. We're cutting down the forests, we're taking out the fish, we're using up more and more energy, which is not so much of a problem as hundreds of years worth of energy still in the ground, is we're pumping out a ton of waste. Mm. Um, I've seen the, the figures just on the household waste produced by some of the new Chinese cities. It's very startling, you know, in terms mm. of thousands of truckloads of municipal waste. Mm. Um, but the waste that I'm most concerned about are the greenhouse gases we're pumping up into the atmosphere. Mm. And you know, no one knows what's going to happen with that. The science of climate change is very complicated. But 80, 90% of the scientists in the world are really believe we're running very nasty risks. That there's a risk of irreversible climate destabilization. <laughs> and so there's a crisis, but it's a sort of slow motion creeping crisis. And humans are bad at slow motion crises. Mm. So uh, yeah, I think it's a huge issue, but most people kind of getting along day to day. Uh, it, it sounds uh, from your perspective that uh, leaders are also uh, often incapable of, of responding or putting the right focus on these issues that have a tendency to build up over time. Well, we know. I mean, how many of us do as much exercise as we should? Okay? <laughs> Not enough exercise is a classic slow motion crisis. You know, 30 years from now, you'll be really glad you exercised. Mm. So in the abstract form, the world faces a major crisis. If I were an executive, I'd go, well, yeah, right. But, you know, Tuesday, I face a major crisis. Right. Okay. So the innovation challenge is how do I translate that slow motion crisis into a real opportunity? Okay. Now, sometimes you're lucky. You know, Coca-Cola was faced with thousands of demonstrators saying, you are using all the water and we don't have enough to drink. So that's making it very clear, very immediate, very in your face. And we're seeing a number of firms for whom that's the case. Okay. Uh, Unilever, which sells a third of all the branded tea in the world, they saw a serious risk to the long-term supply of tea mm. if they didn't find a way to farm tea more sustainably. Um, KKR sees the need to really have an advantage over their competitors. They see saving energy as a great way to make money now. Okay. So that's the great challenge. And I, I think we see a number of old business people stepping up to that. Uh, Re uh, Rebecca, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of your uh, uh, advice here uh, I you know, on this issue, which is very important, uh, goes back to the values of an organization. Can you talk a, a little bit about how the executive leader you know, confronts these very big challenges um, in a way that supports the values or perhaps creates new values for their whole, their whole enterprise? Well, this is an issue I came to out of my previous work. I spent 21 years just trying to understand what makes an organization innovative, what really leads to high productivity in an organization. Okay. And what I saw again and again is even in what we might call mundane challenges. I used to be the Eastman Kodak professor at uh, MIT. So even the challenge of moving from conventional film to digital film, mm. um, I did a lot of work with IT companies. How do we move from just selling devices to being really focused on the cloud and the net? Even these kind of ordinary innovation challenges, 
it really makes a difference. If an organization has some goal beyond simply, we're here to make the shareholders rich. Mm. Not that making the shareholders rich is a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Sure. If we don't make money, if we don't give a decent return to our investors, you know, we're not going to be around for very long. So I absolutely get that. But, you know, one of my colleagues, Peter Senge, said, everyone has to breathe, but the purpose of life is not breathing. Mm. So every business has to make money. Every business has to return a decent return to their shareholders. But that doesn't mean the purpose of business is to get rich. And businesses that see that their purpose is could be serving customers, delighting mm. customers, could be creating great jobs for employees, mm. could be just playing our part in this community in a way that's healthy. That makes a huge difference. Now, if you add to that what we might call a greater purpose, and that's such highfalutin language. I mean, making sure that my grandchildren have enough fresh water and that the climate isn't so crazy that there isn't a food crisis, that's not a greater purpose. That's mm. like a down to earth, let's just make sure we take care of the housekeeping. But, but binding that to our company, saying not only do we produce great products and services that consumers want, but we're doing it in a way that makes a difference for the world around us. Mm. My research suggests that that can make a real difference in the levels of engagement, creativity, and trust that you build as a business leader. Okay, so by doing good, you, a, you, you, you create opportunities to keep your workforce engaged and to deliver better, res, better business results. And, and your customers more engaged, it protects your brand, it mm. sustains your reputation. Not for every company in every place. I mean, I was a strategy professor. It's not like this is an easy win. You've got to think about this. Sure. But to take a leaf from my colleague Michael Porter's book, he's been talking a lot about the concept of shared value. Mm. And I think he's entirely right. There's an opportunity to genuinely create shared value, to make a difference socially and environmentally, and to create value for the company. Hmm. And we should be looking for those. Rebecca, how do you see leading organizations pivoting in, in the marketplace? Um, you know, other examples of, 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 of this shift um, you know, that, that looks at sustainability, that looks at values, that looks at innovation. Um, other case studies that you think we should all be taking a look at? What a great question. Um, I'm from the Harvard Business School, and over the last three years, we've written more than 100 cases about firms facing these challenges and finding profitable ways through them. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. We have small clean tech companies, we have consumer goods companies, we have energy companies, international, local. We're trying to build a library of concrete, grounded, detailed examples of the ways firms can make a difference in this space and grow and make a difference for the business. Okay. Um, innovation. Um, is there still a lot that we don't know about innovation or is it really uh, more a case of learning what others have done to be innovative? Oh, alas. I wish I could guarantee innovation. I wish I had all the answers. <laughs> I've been studying it for 25 years. <laughs> I think we know a little bit about how to shift the odds. I think, and you know, there's some of the basics. We haven't talked about them, but thinking carefully about the business case, mm. making sure that you create an organizational pathway such that the, the existing business doesn't squelch the new one before it has a chance to get its head above the parapet. Um, I think, I know we make that, I know we know that that makes a difference. Mm. I think, and I think a lot of research backs me up, that having a, a broader purpose makes a huge difference to innovation. Will it guarantee success? I'm afraid not. Okay. A lot of hard work, hard work, blood, sweat, tears, and luck mm. still makes a big difference. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, the, yeah. the executive leaders who are part of ExecuNet and, and certainly who comprise uh, much of the audience here at the World Innovation Forum, um, uh, I think they're looking for cues. They're looking for, for, for hints, and, and I suspect a lot of what you share represents something of an intervention. Um, uh, what advice would you give to executive leaders about how they need to change or how they need to view the world differently or the challenges their organizations face differently? What advice can, would you instill or, or ask leaders to embrace uh, so that they can you know, achieve the goals of sustainability, innovation, and business performance? It's a hard question simply because I'm an academic. And I know how hard a life it is to play a senior leadership role in a major business organization. So I'll give some advice, but I'm very aware, you know, this is just from where I sit. Okay. Everyone has to think about their own particular situation. So having said that, a couple of things. First, because we face a slow motion environmental and social crisis, it's often not in our face 
but it's very real. Mm. Depending on your business, I would take a few moments to really check out what's happening. Are you dependent on natural resources? Is your reputation at risk? Are you in communities that could make a difference to your viability going forward? Mm. Just become aware of some of these broader issues. I bet there's someone in your organization who's passionate about these issues. Mm. Maybe give them a little bit of space. Say, just go and see. Is there anything going on in this space that might make a difference for us? Just mm. a little bit of time and energy looking at that issue. The second piece of advice is to consider being a bit more public about why you do what you do. Mm. You know, with very few exceptions, I, I hardly, most business people I meet, they're in business because they feel called to do something important. Mm. Because they want to build a great organization, because they want to provide jobs, because they want to make a difference to the community in which they're in, because they love the product they sell. Mm. And we spend so much time worrying about the numbers and making quarterly returns, and that's all important. But the other stuff is important too. Talking a bit about why you do what you do, about why you have a greater purpose. Mm. Not imposing it on everyone else, not greenwashing, but letting people be a bit more open about the other side of us that makes us really great business people. That's the advice I would give. And I think often those two things come together. Not all the time, but often they do. And there's huge opportunity there when it does. Well, great. Well, I think a lot of executive leaders are looking for pockets of opportunity out there. So uh, thanks. And uh, we'll invite all of our ExecuNet members to learn more about your work uh, at, at Harvard, at the uh, Center for Business and the Environment. And uh, Rebecca Henderson, it's a pleasure to spend some time and to uh, learn from your perspective. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah.